All right, so welcome to today's live lesson for AS English. Today, we will be focusing on, we've been looking at a series of um, candidate responses and then the examiner's responses to their answers. And we're going to continue doing that in today's lesson. We're going to look particularly at paper two, section B. So first of all, let me just move this over here. And it's up here. Okay, um, and then in the meantime, let me also just get the chat box down. So if you want to make any comments or you have any questions you want to ask, please feel free to do that. Nice to see you. Okay, so um, as I said, we're going to focus on paper two, section B, writing for an audience. Okay, so this comes after section A, which is imaginative writing. And then section B, both sections consist of three questions each. So section A, imaginative, imaginative writing, you'll be given three um, different questions that you can choose one from. And then the same for section B, three different questions that you choose one from. And so these are usually questions four, five, and six on the question paper. When, when we're dealing with writing for an audience, it's four, five, and six that fall under that. Okay. So the whole key to doing well in a writing for an audience section is to make sure that you are aware of the format that is being asked of you. Are you being asked to write a speech? Are you being asked to write um, a blog? Um, are you being asked to write two contrasting letters? So be aware of format and be very aware of your audience. Who are you writing to? This is also very important. Okay, Keep that in mind when doing this section. Now let's go down to, here's the marking scheme, and maybe we'll look at it if we get a bit of time. I want to look at um, a candidate's response that got grade A, and look at why they actually got that. And this is question five, so we know it's falling under section B. Let's have a look at the question first. Write the script for a podcast called Secret Places. Now, you would need to know what a podcast is, and I would strongly recommend that you go and look up some podcasts online so you get a good idea of the kind of tone that they adopt, sort of things that they explore, the language and phrasing that is used. So write the script for a podcast, and what is a podcast, just in case you didn't know. Podcasts are episodes of a program online. Okay, so it's kind of episodes, they might have different speakers or different guest lecturers or different performers, depends who, which topic is being explored, but it's like a series of programs. And um, a podcast is one of these episodes of these programs. They are online, they can be audio or visual recording. So they can be on TV or um, a ra on radio, they can be a lecture of sorts. So definitely have a look at some of the podcasts that you can find online so you get a better idea of what they are. Write the script, as in that is the things that are said. Write the script for a podcast called Secret Places, aimed at both local residents and new visitors to the area where you live. Okay. Obviously, you can make up where, where it is that you live if you want to make it a bit more exotic sounding. The script describes unusual and less well-known locations. In your writing, create a sense of interest and enjoyment. Okay, so there's quite a few things to take on board. It has to be a script for a podcast. It's about secret places. It's got to be aimed at local residents and new visitors. So that's who your audience is. Um, it's got to be a place where you live. So in other words, a place that you sound familiar with. Okay, so that you sound like an expert on this place. The script describes unusual and less well-known locations, so not your typical tourist areas. In your writing, you've got to create a sense of interest and enjoyment, so something positive. So there are a lot of things to take on board. So remember, whenever you plan your writing, make sure that you read the question at least twice, underlining the keywords. Then once you've written it, you go back, you read the question, and you see if what you've written fulfills this criteria. Okay. If not, you're going to have to do a bit of editing and squashing in of ideas or, or adding on of a paragraph somewhere. Okay. Right, so this candidate response got a grade A. Note the tone of voice, note the, the way that, this, um, that the audience has kept in mind in the opening of the podcast. And sorry if I struggle with some of the writing here, some of the words I can't always make out straight away. Have you just booked your ticket to the Seychelles Islands? 
or are you just searching for new places to extend your exploration of our majestic islands? Either way, this podcast, so this is good, making, this, um, making the audience aware, this podcast will enrich your minds with knowledge about places you never knew existed in the Seychelles. You never knew existed. Here's that secret places idea coming in. The opening is important. You're showing your marker that you've paid attention to the question. Have you heard of the rock pool at Shea Batista? What about the mystical trail leading to Anse Major Beach? Well, by the end of this program, you will know all about them. And some nice um, emotive punctuation there, exclamation mark, showing excitement, showing interest. And look at this word choice here, mystical. Good, nice use of word. You're already drawn into this. Um, oh, what else was there? Uh, oh, a rock pool. That's also quite an exciting idea. A rock pool, something different. Okay. Right. So the this candidate has introduced the podcast very well and in a believable way. Make it realistic sounding. Okay. Be creative. All right. Now we get more details. So this this shows the knowledge that the speaker has of the area, and that's what the the question requires. The Le Saudier Rock Pool awaits you at Chez Batista, located in the southern region of the island of Mahe. The trail explorers, uh, the trail explorers must take to reach the rock pool may thrill you more than the actual pool. Exotic plants on either side will make you feel as if you are in an Indiana Jones movie. Whereas the little explorers may find themselves impersonating Tarzan. Okay, so this is clever because it's appealing to a wide range of audience members. Older audience members will probably know what Indiana Jones movies are. And then um, little ones will know who Tarzan is. Okay, let me just move this up a bit. Given that the journey from the main entrance to the waterhole is approximately half an hour long and entails areas of stren strenuity, okay, so where you have to be, you have to exert yourself, um, you know, strenuous to get through, entails areas of strenuity, the more active members of the group are guaranteed to cherish the hike. Make note of word choices here, okay. There was exotic earlier on. Um, and um, cherish here, so very positive connotations of words or diction that is used. Okay. Once you reach the rock pool, you will be intrigued by the perfectly circular shape of the hole carved by the waves at the nearby ocean. Local knowledge, something fascinating, something different. The water occupying the pool will serve to cool you down. Well, that sounds inviting, to cool you down following your strenuous hike. Whereas the ladders um, naturally carved in the granite rock present a unique opportunity to capture a few photos, which you may later boast about to your friends. Okay, so this sounds quite chatty, quite conversational, um, giving you ideas, inspiring the audience. When you finally convince yourself that it's time to go, in other words, you won't want to go. You'll want to um, sort of stay there for a while and, and, and soak in this beauty um, before you head back. You may enjoy a lovely buffet lunch at Chez Batista Hotel, which encapsulates Creole cuisine. Lots of specific knowledge here, specific detail thinking about what people want to do. They want to go on a nice hike somewhere. They enjoy the rock pool. They cool down, take some photos, come back, and the hotel has now got a beautiful buffet for you. And not only that, it's Creole cuisine, something different, something enticing. Okay. So that is very well done. Let's look at the next part. <laughs> I also want to go there. Absolutely. I agree with you. <laughs> so just keep this kind of writing in mind when you write because it's just, it's enticing. It's those words, it's those ideas. It's so lovely sounding. It's so good. It's so well done. If you are in search of further hiking opportunities, the trail to Anse Major Beach awaits your footsteps. Although it is an hour long, you become immersed in the rainforest, which encompasses the natural environment of the Seychelles Islands. So now I'm focusing more on um, the tropical environment to be found. If you are lucky, you may see 
Lastly, Seychelles is indigenous plant species, which you won't be able to find anywhere else in the world. Um, this is just very clever ideas this writer is putting in to make it sound more realistic, thinking of all the possible things that could draw a reader into this mysterious unknown place. Okay, these, these indigenous plant species that are you don't find anywhere else in the world. This hike will undoubtedly make you appreciate the natural treasures which the local population strives to preserve. Bringing on the idea or the awareness of, yes, local populations should be brought into this extract somehow and acknowledging that they are part of this preservation process, um, which is something that you would probably find when somebody discusses an area, how the locals look after the area. Okay, so that was clever. Um, strives to preserve. As with Les Sautiers, backpackers, now we're looking at a different kind of tourist, backpackers will be left satisfied by the scenery. And the, I'm not sure what this word says here. If somebody else can make it out, please let me know. So they'll be satisfied by the scenery and the strevity. I'm not quite sure what this word is supposed to be, strevity. But look at the S alliteration, satisfied, um, scenery. And if this is strevity of this hike, of this hike, but playing on those S words makes it more enticing, um, softens it, kind of um, alludes to the kind of enjoyment. Is it strenuity? Maybe it is strenuity, just that looks like a, I don't know what that looks like, but yes, serenity. Possibly, but I think there is an STR, but maybe it is, maybe it's strenuity again. <laughs> maybe they're using that same word. So backpackers who like hiking and sort of earning their, their holiday time will be satisfied by scenery and let's say strenuity for now, okay? But thank you for the suggestions um, of this hike. So, but just, I wanted to draw attention to alliteration. Use alliteration to persuade. Go into advertising slash poetic territory if you need to, okay? Once you complete the hike, you'll find your toes buried in the sand and the ocean water spraying your face. Now, there have been some spelling errors here and there, um, so uh, be aware of them. Um, try not to, try to avoid spelling errors if you can, okay? But mostly, I think the marker likes this because of the ideas and the, and, uh, that are being presented here and the way they are presented. Once you complete the hike, you will find your toes buried in the sand and the ocean water spraying your face. Okay, some beautiful imagery being conjured up there. This is what we want to do when we're on a coastal type of holiday. Ansa Major Beach is known for its mesmerizing, what a beautiful adjective, mesmerizing snorkeling opportunities. As the bed of corals creates a perfect home for some of the world's most beautiful aquatic or aquatic species okay so once again pulling on the language that will entice showing knowledge of the local area if you happen to enjoy paddle boarding the calm waters of the Anse Major are an ideal environment for you although admittedly the board itself may be difficult to carry to the beach unless you have it transported by boat all of these little details make this podcast sound very, very real. For those of you who do not want to enter the water, don't worry. The smooth ivory sand uh, of Anse Major Beach is perfect for sunbathing. Just make sure you don't fall asleep under the blazing sun. So this writer is saying something very clever with the audience. They really are addressing the audience on using that personal direct um, address with the word you. Um, pronoun you, where, where is this? Um, uh, if you happen to enjoy paddle boarding, although it may be difficult to carry, um, just make sure you don't fall asleep under the blazing sun. And this creation of um, a sort of a personal tone draws that reader in again. You are being thought of. I am aware of you and what your needs might be, and these are some suggestions. So it's very clever in the way that it does this. Lastly, now this is nice because we know that the, the student is working through the podcast in a methodical way. There's this and there's this. Lastly, don't forget, if you are looking for something more relaxing, 
Anse Intendani, I think this is another name of a beach, Anse Intendani is tailored to your recreational needs. Anse Intendani, although not widely known, is one of Seychelles' most beautiful beaches and the clarity of the water is incomparable. It cannot be compared to anything else. The beach is largely visited by surfers, although it can be a great place to escape to for both couples and families, offering a wide variety of options for different types of tourists. If you are an adult, you may treat yourself to an alcoholic drink from the nearby rum shack, which will give you a taste of the alcoholic beverages popular in the Seychelles. How clever, bringing in something commercial and that tourists want. Despite their lack of popularity, these places, despite, um, so now they're concluding here, they're, they're tying everything up. Despite their lack of popularity, these places will leave you wanting more. Just don't forget your sunscreen and your water. Okay, so some practical advice. But this is a nice tidy way to tie up all these things and to refer back to this idea of um, this lack of popularity refers back the idea of the question. Now let's go read the question one more time. Did they answer the question given? Write the script for a podcast called Secret Places, aimed at both local residents and new visitors to the area where you live. Now they do touch on um, local residents and I guess in a way they do try and cater for both because they talk about families in general. Um, so you could argue that both have been catered for or maybe more could have been done to entice local residents because surely they know about Creole cuisine, but maybe they don't know about hidden big beaches. Okay, so maybe more could have been done for this part. Um, this idea of where you live, the fact that there was such detailed knowledge um, sort of uh, lets us believe that this person knows where, uh, where they live. Here is a question coming through. Is there a limit to the phrases used or could you use as many as you want? Phrases. Oh, yes, you can use as many phrases as you want. Yes. In fact, if you create a listing effect, sometimes that helps to emphasize something positive that you're trying to portray in those phrases. So, yes, you can. Um, the script describes unusual and less well known locations. Yes, at least three were mentioned. In your writing, create a sense of interest and enjoyment, and that certainly comes through in the diction. Wouldn't you agree? In the words that were chosen. So, I do think that. Considering the time limit, this student did a very, very good job. Um, they really answered the question. Perhaps the local uh, thing could have been more, um, more explored. You can make up the names of places. Absolutely, you can. I'm, I'm sure this is possibly what this person has done. I'd have to do a bit of research on that. But just make it sound convincing. Make up places. It's, you can be creative, but just make it sound convincingly creative, <laughs> okay? Um, and they tied things up nicely, they moved through everything methodically, they thought of different kinds of audiences, different um, age groups to cater for. Um, it was just very, very well done and well thought out, I thought, well planned. Okay. But there were spelling errors, um, but mostly um, it, was, it was well written. Okay, so here's the examiner comment and they got a grade A. All right, so let's keep that in mind. This response to the task of writing a script for a podcast called Secret Places takes a thoughtful approach. I would agree with that. It is at every point appropriate in form. Remember, I talked about format, the form that it has to take. It's appropriate in form and deliberately refers to itself as a podcast and a program. And you'll note that if you do watch or listen to some podcasts, they do do that. That's, the, that's what they do. So I'm firmly setting out the terms of the question, secret places from the beginning, places you never knew existed in the Seychelles. So that whole introduction just worked very well. It, it's very convincing. It engages interest right from the outset by employing questions directed at the audience's desire to explore the unknown with Seychelles as a point of reference. So that there was questionings, but the Seychelles has been put in there so we know which area is being talked about. Um, sorry. 
The candidate uses linguistic devices and exemplification, giving good examples, with a degree of confidence and authority. They know what they're doing when they use devices, metaphors or diction or idioms. They know what they're doing. They do it with confidence and they make it fluent and they do this in a fluent and concise manner, straight into the point. It flows very nicely. Direct address. That is the you, when you directly address someone, direct address immediately arrests the audience's attention. Yes, you're talking to me and I feel that you're talking to me. A range of sentence types are used in addition to the interrogatives mentioned when you interrogate, when you question. Declarative, um, when you declare something, this beautiful beach, okay, it's declarative and exclamatory. You, um, you won't want to leave this beautiful paradise. It's exclaim, it's, it's, it exclaims something, okay? Um, these sentences have been used to excite the audience to the, um, to the beauties and pleasures that await them at Shea Batista. So it's quite interesting how the examiner justifies their claims based on evidence from the, the text itself, which is quite nice. So all of these things have been used. Interrogatives, declaratives, exclamatory sentences. Um, you can look these up for yourselves so that you know the differences. There's another one, there's four types of questions, um, four types of sentences, I can't remember the fourth one right now, but look those up so that you know to use them, this mixture of, of sentence types, okay? Um, imperatives, uh, maybe that's the, the next type. Imperatives are used to create a sense of convivial authority. So an imperative is when you give a command, and that is the fourth type of sentence, sorry. An imperative, enjoy the beach um, at Unsay Major. Enjoy, that's an imperative. Um, cool down with the, the rock pool, um, the beautiful rock pool, whatever. So those are when you make a command, that's imperatives. So imperatives are used to create a sense of convivial authority, sort of something that is friendly. Something is convivial, it's friendly. Do this, do that, Some nice suggestions. Allusions are made using shared cultural stock to further intimacy with the audience, okay? So when you allude to something, you, um, you bring in an idea that most people will know about. It's an illusion. You're allusion. You are alluding to something specific. And here, what did they do? Well, they made references to Indiana Jones. Okay? And that is for the mature listeners. Most older people will know what Indiana Jones is or who Indiana Jones is in the movies. And to Tarzan, most children will know who Tarzan is. Um, I'm talking about in Western culture here. To advertise the fact that even their children will be interested. So, these allusions were very cleverly done. At every point, a range of ideas is presented with options for different activities, whether strenuous or relaxing, because some tourists want to go on holidays that involve lots of activities, and some people just want to go and relax, or maybe there's a, a balance of both. Lively descriptive sections set out to persuade the audience of the beauty of the places covered, and vocabulary is used deliberately to entice, and I would definitely agree with that. Some of the diction was very well chosen, that mesmerizing, for example. The candidate links paragraphs together through discourse markers. Firstly, secondly, thirdly, finally, those are not the exact um, discourse markers, but I'm showing you examples of discourse markers. Or next, or um, another place to visit, those are all discourse markers. They mark your place in the text, so to speak, but you know that you're moving on from one concept to the next concept. Okay? So they make good use of discourse markers, and there is clearly an effective, appropriate structure with clear exposition or explanation of ideas or argument, creating a strong sense of voice. We certainly get this convivial voice, this enticing voice, um, this welcoming voice that comes through. Occasional technical errors do not impede expression. So because there are some technical errors, um, the marker acknowledges these, and then, um, but admits that it doesn't stop you understanding what is going on in the text. Sometimes people make so many errors, cutting sentences short or words just can't be deciphered, that it just cuts you all, um, that you have to really work for the meaning of the text. Okay. So the, the examiner liked all of this. Um, this student got 21 out of 25. I wonder if they deserved higher than that, but perhaps because of these technical errors, maybe. 
perhaps because of not enough um, development of the local thing, which the, the examiner didn't comment on. And perhaps the examiner felt that just the inclusion of families and friends alone was enough to, to cover local people. I'm not sure. But um, let's look at what 21 out of 25 means in terms of getting a grade A. All right. Well, this would mean that we got a band two. Now, isn't that interesting? Because we would assume that this is A, this is B, this is, that would be an assumption, but that is not how Cambridge exams work. And I don't know if I've explained this to you before, but if you don't know, what Cambridge will do is they'll take a sample of papers, they'll mark them, and then they will base their marks, their grades, grade A's, between this mark, grade B's between that mark, based on those samples that they've marked. Because a sample will show the general trend that students are exhibiting, so that they can set an A more easily, they can set a B more easily. So it doesn't necessarily mean um, that a band two is a B, it could actually also be an A, it just depends on how other students overall have performed on this question paper and how you have performed in relation to how they performed, okay? So that means you still have to study and tr try and strive for um, as much um, as many good points in these bands as you can, um, hoping to get that grade A. But honestly, with an A, with the AS English exams, it's very, very, very hard to get an A. Um, and in fact, it has quite a high failure rate. But I believe that if you work hard and you constantly practice your writing and you pay attention to the questions and you go through these kinds of lessons, um, that you'll be fine. Okay. And most of you who, who attend these lessons regularly, I think you'll be fine. You'll definitely, definitely, hopefully pass. Okay. All right, so anyway, I, I digress. This band two, what did it mean? Well, there was a thoughtful approach to the task, appropriate in form, and engaging interest, a strong sense of voice, I agree. Effective, appropriate, structure with clear exposition of ideas or argument. Do you see how some of this was already incorporated into the examiner's comments? Yes, things were explained well and presented well, and examples were given well. Language and rhetorical devices used effectively to explain, argue, or persuade. The language used, well, there was lots of imagery, it was enticing, it was good. Fluent expression capable of complex argument. So in other words, they did pull on that idea of secret places and why you should go there. Occasional technical errors will not impede expression. So yes, the examiner included some of these things in their response. Now, why did they not get, why did they not fall into this part? Interesting, lively approach to task, possibly original, in appropriate form, an engaging audience, a very strong voice, tightly controlled structure develops ideas in logical, effective manner, wide range of language and rhetorical devices used effectively to explain, argue, or persuade, fluent, mature expression capable of complex argument with a high level of technical accuracy, possibly because of the technical accuracy with the spelling, possibly because more rhetorical devices could have been used. I mean, we saw um, good adjectives, we saw um, some alliteration, um, we saw some, did we see metaphors and similes? There perhaps could have been more of those. Um, personification even, maybe just a bit more use of rhetorical devices. So really marking can be quite subjective between two different markers, but they do try to Cambridge as a whole. That's why they do that whole sample thing so that the examiners can then discuss and set things at a certain level. Anyway, hopefully I have made things a bit clearer for you, <laughs> okay? 